Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Charles Coleman. And how are you employed? I'm the uh, patrol lieutenant for the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office. And what are your duties as a patrol lieutenant? Uh, administrative and supervisory in nature. Uh, make sure that our deputies have the training um, and equipment that they need. We oversee their regular day-to-day -day duties and make sure that they're providing the service that the county and our sheriff expect. And do you, do you also assist some, sometimes in investigations if there's uh, dire, if there's short hands? Yes, any major felony case or uh, critical incident, I will uh, assist with the investigation. And did you assist in this investigation? I did. And what role did you have? My main role was to forensically map the uh, crime scene or incident scene on the Apple River. And as part of, why don't you just tell the jury generally what that means? When you forensically map a scene, you end up taking an instrument or a device out there and you try to gather up all the physical evidence with the instrument to transfer over to a digital um, system, allowing you to view the scene days, weeks, or years later. Um, the instrument is accurate and um, helps preserve the scene for you to see after the fact. Once you have the scan, is it kind of like a video game where you can move around inside of it? Um, the scan ends up creating a 3D uh, rendering, kind of like a 3D printer, only with data points. And then you can change the angle in which you're looking at that uh, scene. So you're allowed to either do fly-throughs, like you said, still shots or uh, different perspectives um, at the scene. And in order to, did you, and you did that in this case? I did. And uh, where did you do that scanning? Uh, the scan was at the Apple River um, near Highway 64 overpass and towards upstream uh, further into the river. And did you prepare as part of your testimony today a PowerPoint to help explain that to the jury? I did. Judge, um, where's I'd move to admit that PowerPoint. The exhibit number? Exhibit 51. The objection to 51? No, Judge. It's received. Can we have the screen, please? What's, uh, what's in the image on this first slide? The image on the slide is the uh, Trimble SX-10 uh, total station scanner. That's the device you used? Correct. And what are we looking at on this slide three? You're looking at a side-by-side -side comparison. On the right is the uh, drone fly-through video. Um, on the left is a similar fly-through that we did with the uh, 3D mapping from the scene. Where did that drone footage come from? Uh, from Deputy Force Hendrickson and Sergeant uh, Chase Duran. So they flew the river, and is that a sheriff's office drone? It is. Oops. These are videos, right? Correct. Uh, 
And so what are you trying to document here, show? Show the accuracy of the total station scanner uh, compared to the drone video footage as an overview of the Apple River, the drone footage and the fly through and the di digital uh, video are showing it going from downstream upwards upstream. So you flying away from the bridge? Correct. And then what is this one? It's a different video showing uh, the drone flying upstream, now downstream towards the bridge. And on the left-hand side is a video fly-through from our forensic data showing the similar aspect. Just trying to generally document the area of the river? Correct. Now when the video stopped, do you see that shadow going across the river at the right image across the water? I do. Would that be the bridge? It is. What's this? This is a legend explaining uh, any future still shots, um, explaining what each item represents on the right-hand side. Um, it's not easy to explain the cardinal directions of many of our still shots and photographs, so it's easy to represent what's upstream and what's downstream. Um, if you compare it to pouring a glass of water, um, as the water fills up, you get more blue down towards the bottom, so the water is flowing downward. Um, each circle represents an uh, initial point either for contact, attack, or witness groups, as well as uh, knife recovery location. How about slide six? On the left-hand side, you have a uh, drone still shot photo overview of the river. Um, as you see what the arrow downstream is at the bottom of the photograph, on the right-hand side is a still shot rendering with our forensic data uh, utilizing the scanner showing the same uh, view, viewpoint. Slide seven. Again, on the left-hand side is a still shot from the drone footage uh, on the left side, excuse me, and on the right-hand side is a 3D rendered uh, still shot using the total station scanner data um, showing the same perspective. Same thing, but now facing upstream? Correct. Upstream would be at the bottom, and the river is flowing downwards uh, towards the top of the photographs. Slide 9. Again, an overview photograph from the drone footage on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is our uh, forensic uh, still shot using the data collected from the scanner. The water at the lower left-hand corner is upstream, and it flows downstream towards the bridge in the upper right-hand corner. Slide 10, what are we looking at? This is an overall still shot that we created uh, with the scanner data. Uh, included in this are locations of the initial contact um, in the white circle. Uh, the yellow circle is the attack location. Um, the pink circle is the Carlson uh, tubing group, and the orange circle is the Mu uh, tubing group. If you can see on the left-hand side of the middle of the river, there's a large white pole that extends from uh, the tree line. Um, that is the knife location. If we were to put a circle down on the ground, you wouldn't be able to see it because of the tree uh, overhang from the 3D drawing. And so the bridge would be above this area of the river? Correct. The bridge would be further uh, forward on top of the photograph. Now I'm just going to end the show quick so I have my pointer here. Is this what you're talking about, the vertical line of the knife location? Correct. I'm just going to zoom in. <clears throat> and do you go through in later slides on how you estimated these locations? Yes. Uh, with the assistance of Investigator Schultz, um, we were able to take direct data points um, utilizing a prism pole. Um, he had an estimated location of each um, incident. 
Um, and so we took direct shots to create that circle. Similar diagram, but looking upstream now? Correct. So what are we looking at here? On the left-hand side is a drone uh, photograph. On the right-hand side is a similar sp uh, perspective using the forensic data. In this uh, uh, still shot that we took, we included the initial contact location, uh, the Carlson group, uh, Mew tubing group, and the right-hand side, you can see the long pillar where the knife location was at. So that, that orange circle in the background of the right in the scan, it looks like a kind of a green spot it's on, but that in the left, would that be that sandbar? Yes. Same diagram facing towards the bridge? Correct, different perspective. Same thing? Same thing, different perspective. What are we looking at in, on this slide, 15? On the left-hand side, we have a more focused um, still shot with the forensic data. Uh, with the instrument, we're able to get accurate measurements. And with this, we were able to determine the width of the river at different points along the, the river. As you can see on the left-hand side, the lower portion, it's 155 feet, uh, approximately 155 feet across, then 150. 147 and then 155 feet across. On the right hand photograph, you see a more um, overview of more of the river. And again, the measurements are included there, 155, 150, 147, 155, and the uh, river narrows to 123 and 110. And those are all in feet. And is this, um, the technology for this, is it similar to kind of the 3D scans, maybe some realtors or construction companies use now? So the Trimble SX-10 scanner is a total station scanner that uh, utilizes infrared laser beams. Um, it also takes panoramic photographs. Um, and so you are able to take a scan in 360. Everything the infrared laser uh, hits or reflects off of returns to the instrument. It creates a data point for that. It uses the... Um, pictures that it takes in order to create a color for each individual data point. It collects approximately 26,000 data points per second um, in the scanner mode. Um, the instrument is good up to 600 meters, and at accuracy at 100 meters, it's approximately 14 millimeters. This instrument's used by land surveyors, uh, building contractors, and in law enforcement, we utilize it for uh, forensic gathering of, of scenes, whether internal or external. Do you do anything to make sure that when it's giving you uh, data points that it's m accurately recording the distances? Yes, we do a, a distance ac accuracy check at the beginning of the scan. Um, we'll end up laying out a tape measure. We'll do a direct shot instead of a scan of that tape measure and measure it from there. We'll go into the computer software system, measure those two same points and make sure that it's accurate. So if you had this out of the screen. If you had this program open on your computer, could you click between two different points and get a measurement of the distance between them? Any individual dot that's on that drawing, we could get an X, Y, and Z measurement for it. So measurement across, height, and slope. And then in the next few slides, what are you showing? So this is, uh, since we're able to view from different perspectives, this is the perspective if you're standing near the Mew Group uh, location by the island sandbar that you can see in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, the circle ahead of you is the initial contact location. And on the right-hand side, the um, purple circle is uh, the Carlson Group. I'm gonna back up, I forgot to ask you a question here. I'm gonna end the show so I can use my cursor. Now the, the witness has a monitor they can annotate. Oh. Both of you are aware of that or not. All right. So the 
in this slide, I just went back to 15. The, you have two dots representing where the uh, Isaacs group was, right? Correct. And then for the Carlson's group, there's just one dot, but would they, were they also drifting? Yes, the location of the Carlson group was based off of Investigator Schultz's um, knowledge. We took a direct shot of it, but it was the stationary location, not them progressing down the river. And what are we looking at here? So with our drawing software, we're able to put in uh, mannequins or models. In this case, we were able to uh, put a six foot tall person into the river to show the perspective from Muse Group to what a person at that distance would look like. Again, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Again, with this one, uh, now we have the yellow circle as the um, initial contact progress further down river to the attack location, the six foot tall person is placed in the general area of uh, that attack location. Slide 19. This perspective is from the Carlson group um, and here they're looking across river. So to your left will be up river. And as the water flows to the right down river, um, you'll see their perspective of the initial contact and their perspective towards the attack location. Slide 20. Again, in the drawing, we just include a six foot tall uh, mannequin to show visual perspective of what a person would look like at that distance. 21. This again is a six foot tall person now near the attack location uh, as witnessed from the original location of the Carlson group. And these, these approximate uh, locations of the groups, did you get that from comparing it to the video of the incident? I did. So what are we looking at on slide 22? So on the left-hand side is our perspective of the initial contact is facing upstream towards uh, the Mew Tuber group. Um, this will show on the right-hand side the still frame extraction from... Um, slide 0196, I ended up cropping the perspective to compare to what the phone video looks like for that still shot and showing the background with the trees and where uh, the Mew group is at, putting that approximate circle there. 23. Slide 24. Again, to help confirm with the initial contact location uh, based off the video still shots uh, from the cell phone, 0462 um, is on the right and on the left hand side is our crop perspective from the initial contact looking at that same bridge. 26. In this still photograph, um, we compared uh, still shot 2961 um, and create the perspective on the left using the drawing software program. It's looking back upriver. On the left, uh, you see this purple circle for the Carlson group, and you can barely see it in the middle, um, the outline of the Mew group in orange. We cropped up perspective to match similarly to the phone still shot, and in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the light green uh, grassy area uh, just outside of the Sandbar Island area. So just to simplify it a little bit, is it fair you're looking at the video and then trying to do a fly through of your 3D scan to find the same perspective of different clips in the video? Do your best to go into the, the 3D drawing and zoom in or get to the exact perspective. And there may need to be some manipulation of just your viewpoint, not of the data, just of the view of what you're looking at inside the drawing um, in order to create the still shot on the left-hand side. And 28, what are we looking at? On the right-hand side is the uh, still shot of the cell phone video 2995. 
Um, on the left-hand side is the same perspective. This is now the le attack location um, and showing the Carlson group uh, straight ahead at that perspective. As you can see with the trees on the top of the photograph um, uh, matching the render drawing on the left-hand side. And can you can we activate his screen, Judge, so you can kind of trace what he's talking about about the tree yeah, line? There should be a uh... cursor on there, Your Honor. Yeah, just use your finger. Okay. okay, thank you. So what I'm looking at here is the same tree line that I see here, and then I see there to show the same perspective. And then what are we looking at in slide 30? This is an overview of the river. Upstream is towards the top of the photograph, downstream towards the bridge is on the bottom. Uh, we have the initial contact location is the white circle and a measurement between that circle and the attack location, which is in feet. So about 62? Approximately uh, 62 feet, yes. Same thing, but looking the other direction? Correct. Now uh, the bridge is at the top of the photograph and um, upstream towards the islands at the bottom. Slide 32. This is a overview, the distance between the attack location and the knife recovery location, which is approximately 114 feet. Slide 33. This is the attack location to um, distance to the Mu group, which is 233 feet, and the approximate distance from the attack location to the uh, Mu uh, Carlson group, excuse me, which is approximately 132 feet. And that would be 132 feet from the ultimate spot, but if the Carlsons continued to drift downriver, they would have been closer, fair? Correct. Sustained. The, let me go back. So how many dots do you have for Isaac's group in this one? Two. And what the, what's the white dot? The white dot's the initial contact location. Yellow dot? The attack location. And then the pink dot for the Carlson group, what's that? the initial location that investigator Schultz told me where the Carlson group was at. So no subsequent location is of a Carl of the Carlson group is identified in the diagram. No. And slide 34. What are we looking at? On the left-hand side is a uh, photograph from the drone footage. On the right-hand side is the uh, still shot perspective. Uh, and I'm towards... just going to zoom in. Actually, let me focus you here. On the left, um, just how about just on the left photo, what are we looking at? So it's a uh, photograph from the drone footage uh, showing deputies or investigators there. I believe uh, Investigator Sheppy is on the left-hand side. Um, walking in towards the tree line location on the south shore. Where that, to identify where that knife was found? That's where I was informed the knife was found, yes. And on the right, same location, but from the scan? Same perspective. And so the bridge from here would be to the right? Correct, downstream. Same thing, but now there's that white bar White bar signifying the location of the knife recovery. Now just a zoomed out perspective of the knife recovery. And then an overview of the knife recovery location. And then the bottom left of that right image would be that sandbar? I do. 
Did you guys, did the Sheriff's Office measure the water depth? We did. And so what are we looking at in slide 38? So with direct shots, we're able to utilize a um, prism pole. We measured the height of the pole, and then the bottom of it, the instrument will measure where the sand um, ground is underneath the water, uh, since the instrument does not reflect off water. Uh, so we're able to take direct shots in different areas of the um, river, and in this area near the attack location, the approximate depth of the river was 0.83 feet, or approximately 9.96 inches. And was this measured the same day as the incident or later, if you recall? Approximately one month after. Okay. So the, if the more rain, less rain, it could have been different? Could have been. Okay. I don't have anything else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Right away regarding the depth, sir. The, you said it was the depth was measured one month later, correct? Correct. Um, the date of the incident was July 30th, correct? Correct. And so August 30th, roughly? September 1st. Okay, so uh, more than 30 days. Correct. 32 days. 33 days. Somewhere in there? Somewhere in there. Uh, you would agree that uh, you've lived in this area for some time, right? Yes, sir. You're familiar with the river? I am. You're um, familiar with the trends of uh, rivers in this area throughout the, the year, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, would you agree that, typically speaking, rivers' uh, depth goes down between the end of July and the end of August? Typically. Did you do any investigation to determine whether or not the amount of rainfall that we had from July 30th to August to September First, I did not. So um, you have no idea, to some extent, how deep it was on July 30th. Correct. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, maybe this would be a good time to break. I sure, that's fine. Taking a break uh, in between examinations. But it is 2.30. Uh, why don't we take uh, 15 minutes? We'll come back at 2.45.